Hello everyone. Welcome to Hockey Demo. In this series of construction project management basics, we will be dividing it in three main modules. Basically in this series, we will see all the basic steps or all the basic terminologies that you need to know before starting the actual project management. Now, we have given it the name basics since it is the primary step that you need to take in the field of project management in this series we are going to learn basics of cpm in three various courses the first one is type of projects and project parameters the second one is mega project teams and their roles and responsibilities and the third one is project parameters project documents and project design steps in this first module we will be covering the types of projects now as you know there are various types of projects that one can do in the field of engineering now we have divided these types of projects into five main sectors namely the residential sector the commercial sector the third one is the institutional sector fourth the industrial sector and lastly we have infrastructure projects now all these sectors also have their further bifurcations that include various types of projects themselves for example if we take the residential sector in that we have bungalows tenements flats apartments then townships uh, that is the flat areas in some townships also so these are all the examples of our residential sector projects similarly we will see the different types of projects in other sectors also now what is uh, the attractive thing about this module is we will not only see the types of projects but we will discuss each and every area that is included in that project so what do i mean by that this is that we will see in detail that once you enter the site and we roam around the entire structure and leave the site till then what all different areas you will be seeing in that particular project let's say for example if we take an industry right so starting from the industry boundary wall we enter into the industry first we saw the security cabin then we will see the passage then there will be different utility blocks production area packaging area right then there will be admin blocks we will have the canteen then we will have different types of storage materials labs uh, that is uh, research labs right so all these different areas that a industry can have we will discuss them all in detail so basically after this course or this module you will be able to recall all the types of projects that exist in this domain as well as all the areas that are included in this project right in this second module we will be going in detail about the mega project teams and the roles of all the individuals in that team so if any kind of mega project is going on then there will be a lot of people involved in that entire project which will be ranging from the laborers contractors to the client engineers right so there will be a lot of people in the entire span of the project let's say the uh, project goes on for 3 years or 5 years then uh, it might employ 100 people it might employ 500 people or even 1000 people so all these people work together as a team to complete the project in this module we will be seeing the different types of teams that are involved in any kind of mega project now as you can see here there are mainly five teams that are involved in a project the first one is the client team second will be the architects and the interior designing team third will be our engineering design consultant so they will be doing the entire engineering design of our project say it be hvac civil design mechanical electrical all that sorts fourth will be our suppliers the suppliers will be supplying us the materials equipments machineries right and finally we will have the contractors the contractors will execute our entire project they will be civil contractors similarly mep contractor hvac fire fighting electrical all those contractors now uh, what is the role of each and every individual in that project a same person from the same field can have different roles 
if we place that person in different teams. What do I mean by that? Let's take an example of a civil engineer. Now, if I put the civil engineer in the client team, I put him in the architect team, in the engineering design team, in the contractors team, in the PMC team or in the supplier team, the same civil engineer will have very different role and scope of work in each and every single team. So even though he belongs to the same field, the scope and role of his work in that project changes dramatically. So we will be seeing the roles of each and every single person and the scope of their work that are involved in this project in very detail in this entire module. And in this module, the last and the third module, we will be going in detail about three main things. Firstly, the design steps or the design step flow. So we will be seeing the entire flow chart where we will discuss in detail about the different types of design steps. So from the point of inception of the project until the execution, what is the entire design process, right? So we will discuss that in detail. Second, we will go through all the types of data and documents that are needed before starting our design work. So all the different types of documents that are involved in civil engineering design, then electrical, MEP, HVAC, firefighting, we'll go in detail about all the different types of documents there. And we will show you with examples, PDFs, that how these documents look, what are the parameters, then what are the different kinds of data that are included in these documents, okay? And finally, the last thing that we will see is the design parameters and the RDS, the room data sheet, okay? So starting with the first one, we will see in detail that what is our design process, as I explained earlier. Second, we will see the documents. And third, lastly, we will see that before starting the design, what parameters do we need to define and what is a room data sheet? Now, what are the design parameters? Say, if I am a client and I want to establish an industry or I want to open a university or school, then there are two basic parameters that I as a client should have in my mind. The first one is our budget, right? That I have this budget for this project. And second is the final outcome. Now what I mean by final outcome is, by a university or a school, I need to define the design parameter as the number of students that this school will accommodate. So I want to make a school that will teach 10,000 students. I want to establish an industry that will give me X number of products per day. Okay, so this is our design parameter. So we have different design parameters in different types of projects. We will see all those parameters and then we will have our room data sheet. Room data sheet is basically a document. Uh, it is in Excel where we define the different types of parameters in a specific room, which helps us design that entire room, the engineering services. Okay, let's take one small example. If I am working in an industry, and uh, I want to design a clean room in a pharmaceutical industry, right? Then in the RDS, uh, I will have different parameters like what is the pressure that I want to maintain in this clean room, pressure of the air, then uh, what are the different types of gases that I need in this room, what are the dimensions in this room, then uh, what, are, what should be my adjoining rooms that are connected to the clean room. So all of these parameters I will mention in my RDS and these RDS will be then submitted to our engineering design consultant who will design the entire project based on these design parameters. So in this module, basically, we will be going through all these processes. So at the end of this module, we will have completed our CPM basics, the basic terminologies, the basic parameters, the basic understanding of project management. So now you can advance to a more sophisticated level of project management. Thank you. Hokey Demi, shaping professionals for a better future. 
Pokedemi is aiming to be the world's largest learning platform for engineers and architects. 